Planova, Rossmore Excursion Desk Coordinator. Today I invite you to explore Barcelona, the beautiful capital of Catalonia region in Spain. Give me just a minute. Barcelona is known for rich history, colorful art, marvelous architecture. From the romantic narrow alleys of the Gothic Quarter and Boston beachside nightclubs and restaurants to the city's dozens of sacred churches and architectural marvels, Barcelona attracts tourists from all over the world with an almost overwhelming variety of things to do. The first human settlements in Barcelona date back to Neolithic times. The city itself was founded by the Romans who set up a colony called Barcino at the end of the first century BC. The colony had some thousand inhabitants and was bounded by a defensive wall the remains of which can still be seen in the old town. For over 200 years, Barcelona was under Muslim rule, and following the Christian reconquest, it became a county of Carolingian Empire. In 1150, County of Barcelona was joined with a small feudal county of Aragon, following the marriage of the Count of Barcelona, Ramon Beringer IV, to the one-year-old Peronella of Aragon in 1137. In just 100 years, Aragon had grown to become one of the most important Christian kingdoms in Mediterranean and began to develop its own national identity and language that would evolve into modern Catalan. As the Christian Reconquista reached its full momentum in the 12th and the 13th centuries, the Kingdom of Aragon began to compete with the Kingdom of Castile, another major Christian kingdom in Spain, in the conquest of new territories from the Muslims of the south of Spain. The fruitful medieval period established Barcelona's position as the economic and political center of the Western Mediterranean. The city's Gothic quarter bears witness to the splendor enjoyed by the city from the 13th to the 15th centuries. In 1474, Ferdinand II of Aragon married Isabella I of Castile and the Kingdom of Aragon was merged with the Kingdom of Castile. Eventually, this joint kingdom would evolve into the modern nation of Spain. From the 15th to the 18th centuries, Barcelona entered a period of decline. While it struggled to maintain its economic and political independence, this struggle ended in 1714 when the city fell to the Bourbon troops and Catalan's rights and privileges were suspended. A period of cult cultural recovery began in the mid-19th century with the arrival of the development of the textile industry. Catalan language regained its prominence as an official language in the region. The 20th century ushered in widespread urban renewal throughout Barcelona. Antoni Gaudí, one of the most eminent architects, designed buildings such as the Casa Mila, the Casa Batio, and La Sagrada Familia Church, which have become world-famous landmarks. The freedoms achieved during this period were severely restricted during the Civil War in 1936 and the subsequent dictatorship. With the reinstatement of democracy in 1978, Barcelona society regained its economic strength and the Catalan language was restored. 
the city's hosting of the 1992 Olympic Games gave fresh impetus to Barcelona's potential and reaffirmed its status as a major metropolis. Most of the people who live in Barcelona are bilingual and speak Catalan and Spanish, which is also an official language. Street names and most road and transport signs are in Catalan language. We're going to start the tour of Barcelona at the Gothic Quarter or Barigotique. It is the oldest part of Barcelona as, and one of the most wonderful. Its maze of narrow streets and picturesque plazas is steeped in the city's past and present. Here you'll find beautiful examples of Roman and medieval era architecture, rubbing elbows with the many shops, restaurants, cafes, bars and clubs that line this neighborhood. The origins of Barcelona's Plaza Nova can be traced back to 1358, when it was the site of the city's hay market. Here you come face to face with the monumental wall and gate of the Roman city of Barcino. These two circular towers flank the gate that leads into the heart of the Gothic Quarter. If you look across to the other side of the Plaza Nova, you'll see the building of the Architects Association. The most striking element is a series of sand-cast friezes around the façade designed by Pablo Picasso. Towering above the center of the Gothic Quarter is the Cathedral of the Holy Cross and Saint Eulalia, also known as Barcelona Cathedral. This Gothic Cathedral is the seat of the Archbishop of Barcelona. The construction of cathedral began in the late 13th century, although it wasn't completed until the mid-15th century. 140 statues of saints called the cathedral home. The Gothic interior is beautiful and adorned with many elements plated with gold. The Monstrous is one of the cathedral's treasures. Made of gold and silver, it is adorned with jewels. The silver throne has served as the base for the Monstrous since the mid-15th century. The throne dates from the 14th century and was allegedly left to the church by King Martin the Humane. Behind the cathedral, stands the beautiful Plaza de saint philippe Neri, with its Baroque church. The square is surrounded by narrow streets suffused with history. The Plaza del Rey proudly showcases the architectural ensemble made up of the royal residences of the Catalan-Aragonese monarchs. Below the square, you can visit the impressive archaeological remains of Romano Borsino. Plaza saint germain is where the Catalan seat of government has been since the Middle Ages. The city hall is also located here. Very near the Plaza de saint germain right in the middle of the Barcelona neighborhood, is the old Jewish quarter with its endless narrow streets and remains of the ancient synagogue. Also located in the Gothic Quarter is the Picasso Museum. While most people know Pablo Picasso for his distorted portraits, this museum displays his work on a timeline, allowing you to follow his progression from the more controlled works of his early years to the very whimsical paintings and sculptures from the end of his career. Make sure you dedicate plenty of time to this museum. The permanent collection has over 3,800 works from different periods, including works from his famous Blue Period. From the Gothic Quarter, we will head north via La Ramblas, a pedestrian-friendly pathway smacked right in the middle of the city. 
This bustling street is one of the city's major tourist hubs. If you're visiting Barcelona, you're bound to end up here eventually. During the day, you can peruse souvenir stands, watch the street performers, pick up some local art, or sit down and enjoy a light snack at one of the many cafes found here. When the sun sets, you should head here to start your night out, as many bars and clubs can be found in the surrounding area. Plaza de Catalania is a lively square in the heart of Barcelona. A favorite meeting point, Plaza de Catalania is the nerve center of the cap Catalan capital. The plaza was opened by King Alfonso XIII in 1927. When the city was preparing for the 1929 International Exhibition, some of the new Barcelona's most luxurious hotels restaurants and theaters were built around the plaza. The plaza is lined with an impressive collection of statues and two beautiful fountains. The fountains are illuminated at night for a spectacular water show. Not far from Plaza de Catalania is Casa Batio, known for its vibrant colors, intricate tile work, and skeletal terraces. This apartment building created by Catalan architect Antoni Gaudí is probably one of the most recognized. The unconventional facade is inspired by the legend of Saint George, whose story is famous for slaying a dragon to save the princess. The roof is spectacular and depicts the dragon's scaly back while the skeletal balconies and bony windows are said to represent the dragon's previous victims. Make sure you go inside to tour the equally eye-catching interiors, including the noble floor, which was once home to the Batio family. Today the building is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Just three blocks north is another Antoni Gaudi's masterpiece, a fortress-like Casa Mila. It is known for its wavy stone facades and intricate carvings that can only be attributed to Gaudi's Kirky style. Casa Mila was originally constructed as a home for the commissioner of the building, who also requested that the complex includes apartments for rent. There are no straight walls or right-angled corners in the entire building. Head to the roof to get a good look at Gaudi's chimney garden, many of which resemble heads of armor. Then work your way down through exhibits to learn more about Casa Mila and Gaudi himself. Casa Mila has been designated as a national, national monument of interest by the Spanish government and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. We are heading north to Gracia neighborhood and its most important tourist attraction, Park Güell. The park is another one of Gaudi's creations and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Park Güell initially was an attempt to create a housing estate for the rich in a natural setting, an ambitious property development project commissioned by Gaudi's patron, Eusebi Güell. The architect chose a site where 40 detached houses were supposed to be built. Only two were actually completed, and Gaudi lived in one of them. It is now a museum devoted to architects' life and work. Gaudi planned the park after gardens he had seen in England and building around the natural elements of the land instead of tearing them down. Today, park covers 42 acres of space and features paths, arcades and viaducts that are fully integrated into Barcelona's natural surroundings. 
Gaudi's vivid imagination is revealed in the different elements that amaze visitors from around the world. The gatehouses, which were originally designed as the caretakers' houses, are now home to Park Güell's visitor center. The flight of steps, with its famous dragon covered in colored broken ceramic pieces, leads up to the Zala Hipostila, an impressive hall with 86 columns, which underpins the plaza above. The plaza was originally intended to be a marketplace. One long wavy stone bench adorned with vibrant mosaics and equipped with the views of the ocean curves around the perimeter of the plaza. It was designed by one of Gaudi's associates in the construction of this unique park. There are plenty of picturesque pathways that weave along verdant vegetation cascading staircases, and jagged stone columns and tunnels. Park Güell is now Barcelona's most visited public park, and definitely one of the city's jewels. Located in the heart of Barcelona, La Sagrada Familia, Church of the Sacred Family, is one of a kind cathedral. Even if you're not all that interested in the architecture, you're sure to be amazed by this incredible church. The foundation for the church was laid in 1882. Antoni Gaudí was commissioned for the construction and devoted himself to this project up until his death in 1926. Funded by private donations, the construction still continues and is expected to be completed in 2026. Even unfinished, the church attracts more than 4.5 million visitors a year and is the most visited monument in Spain. Gaudi's main goal for La Sagrada Familia was to teach people about Catholicism through architecture. The best place to see this is right outside of the church. The central tower, still under construction, will rise 170 meters above the transept and represents Christ. The 12 towers along the three facades represent the Apostles, while the remaining five represent the Virgin Mary and the four Evangelists. The three facades of the La Sagrada Familia show the life of Christ, his birth, death, and resurrection. Two of them, the Passion Facade and the Nativity Facade, have been already completed, while the construction of the Glory Facade remains ongoing. The Northeastern Nativity Facade is the artistic pinnacle of the building mostly created under Gaudi's personal supervision. In front of the blue stained glass window is the star. Directly above it is the Archangel Gabriel's Annunciation to Mary. There are musicians and angel figures all surrounded by a vegetable world with flowers and animals and birds covering all surfaces of the portico and giving it an impressive aspect of unity. In the upper part of the ensemble, we, we can see a green cypress tree, a refuge in a storm for the white doves of peace dotted over it. The work on Southwest Passion Facade on the theme of Christ's last days and death with four towers and a large sculptured bedecked portal started in 1954 and was only officially completed in 2018. The late sculptor Joseph Maria Subirachis worked on its decoration from 1986 to 2006. He did not attempt to imitate Gaudi, instead producing angular, controversial images of his own. 
the main series of sculptures on three levels are in an S-shaped sequence, starting with the Last Supper at the bottom left, passing Christ crucified in the top center and ending with the Christ's burial at the top right. The glory facade will, like others, be crowned by four towers. Gaudi wanted it to be the most magnificent facade of the church. La Sagrada Familia's interior is just as striking. The roof is held up by a forest of innovative, extraordinary angled pillars with supporting branches, creating the effect of a forest canopy. The pillars are of four different types of stone. They vary in color and load-bearing strings, from the soft Monjuic stone pillars along the lateral aisles to granite, dark gray basalt, and finally, burgundy, Iranian porphyry for the key columns at the intersection of the nave and transept. The stained glass windows in shades of red, blue, green, yellow, and orange create a magical atmosphere when the sun heats the windows. Gaudi saw the completion of the cathedral as his holy mission. As funds dried up, he contributed his own, and in the last years of his life, he was never shy of pleading with anyone who he thought would be a likely donor. In all, he spent 43 years on La Sagrada Familia. Below ground level next to the Passion Facade is the Gaudi Museum. It focuses on Gaudi's life and work, as well as plans at the heart of his building techniques. A side hall leads to a window above the simple crypt in which the genius is buried. When you feel like you've hit your Gaudi limit, head to the Pueblo Espanol, Spanish village, located on the Montjuic Hill. This charming open-air museum was constructed for the 1929 Barcelona International Exposition and remains open ever since. The museum features 117 buildings, streets, and squares in all various types of authentic Spanish architecture that differ according to the region's resources and climate. The museum also has over 40 craft workshops in which visitors can witness how many different objects are made and can also purchase them, making great souvenirs for friends and family. No visit to Barcelona will be complete without seeing a flamenco show. Created as a tribute to the iconic flamenco dancer Carmen Amaya, the Tablao de Carmen offers a true traditional flamenco show since 1988. This is an intimate space that allows spectators a close experience with flamenco, while enjoying a wonderful dinner with tapas and drinks. This will be an unforgettable experience and one of the highlights of your visit. While with all the sightseeing, don't forget that Barcelona is located on the shore of the Mediterranean Sea and has wonderful beaches right in town. Make sure that you spend some time here. Well, Barcelona is definitely a, a year-round destination. Uh, it has mild winters and summers can get hot and humid, but in overall, you definitely can visit Barcelona any time of year. Well, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. We at the excursion desk offer trips to Spain and cruises on the Mediterranean Sea on a regular basis. Those are always popular. 
I hope this sparked your interest in visiting Barcelona sometime in the future. If you have any questions, you can call me at 925-988-7731 or you can email me at apomazanova at rosmo.com. For now, stay safe and healthy. Goodbye.